Hi guys, it's Stock Curry, and the entire direction of the stock market for the next two months will be decided on Wednesday. And it's not just the Fed rate hike decision. There's a lot more happening Wednesday that you need to know about. So let's get into it. One of the main drivers in the market right now is the banking crisis. And there are some signs that things are getting better, but there are other signs that there's a lot of worries and problems that could show up in the future. On Tuesday, the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen spoke at the American Bankers Association, and she said that the government could backstop more deposits if necessary in order to stop contagion. Janet Yellen said the steps we took were not focused on aiding specific banks or classes of banks. Our intervention was necessary to protect the broader U.S. banking system. And similar actions could be warranted if smaller institutions suffer deposit runs that pose the risk of contagion. Janet Yellen continued saying the situation is stabilizing and the U.S. banking system remains sound. The Fed facility and discount window lending are working as intended to provide liquidity to the banking system. Aggregate deposit outflows from regional banks have stabilized. And that was the news that the market needed to hear. The fact that the bank runs are starting to slow down and come to an end is exactly what we needed to bring stability back to the banking sector and to remove fears of further banks going out of business. At the same time Janet Yellen was giving her speech, the Federal Reserve was mulling an unlimited deposit guarantee, but only if the bank crisis worsens. All of this good news about deposits being guaranteed regardless of bank size sent First Republic shares jumping over 30%, leading the way to a comeback rally in regional banks on Tuesday. Now, even though we got great news out of the United States on Tuesday showing that the banking fears are starting to subside, there could be more banking fears on the horizon. It's very important to understand that the bank collapses two weeks ago were a lot more of a Bear Stearns moment, if we're going to compare things to 2008, rather than a Lehman style moment. In 2008, in Bear Stearns, which happened back in March of 2008, Bear Stearns was saved by being bought out by J.P. Morgan Chase, and it starved off any other bank fears for about six more months. In fact, after J.P. Morgan bought Bear Stearns, the market rallied. It was up between 10 and 15 percent, depending upon which index you looked at. It wasn't until six months later that Lehman Brothers collapsed and was not saved. And that's what caused the whole financial crisis. So right now we're kind of in a Bear Stearns moment where the banks have been saved. Things are starting to get better and we're certainly set up for a stock market rally. But we do have to be on the lookout for possible problems in the banking system a few months down the road. For one thing, the UBS Credit Suisse deal puts Switzerland's reputation on the line. The Credit Suisse debacle will have serious ramifications for other Swiss financial institutions. A countrywide reputation with prudent financial management, sound regulatory oversight, and frankly, for being somewhat dour and boring regarding investments, has been wiped away. Aside from the reputation of banks being destroyed, Credit Suisse's bondholders are preparing a lawsuit after $17 billion of bonds was wiped out. Swiss regulator Finma announced Sunday that its AT1s, widely regarded as relatively risky investments, will be written down to zero while stock investors receive payouts as part of the UBS Credit Suisse takeover. This angered bondholders. In yesterday's video, I explained what these AT1 bonds are, and I showed you how AT1 bonds at other financial institutions had fallen over 8% on fears that they might get written down as well. And anxiety has spread past the AT1 bond market and has stricken the $8 trillion mortgage debt market. 
Mortgage-backed securities, like all long-term bonds, are vulnerable to rising interest rates, which pushed their prices down last year. Now that the Federal Deposit Insurance Corp has taken over SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, investors expect the bonds to be sold off in the coming months, adding supply to the already weakened market and pushing prices even lower. And Charles Schwab, U.S. Bank Corp, Truist Financial, Key Corp, and Fifth Third Bank Corp are most at risk of write-downs. But a Charles Schwab spokesman said, given our significant access to sources of liquidity, there is almost zero chance that we would need to sell our portfolio prior to maturity. Measures taken by U.S. regulators would prevent a fire sale. The Fed's lending facility and other initiatives would prevent banks from doing any forced sales. But even if mortgage-backed securities are safe, commercial property debt is creating more bank worries. A record amount of commercial mortgages expiring this year is set to test the financial health of small and regional banks already under pressure. Smaller banks hold around $2.3 trillion in commercial real estate debt. That's almost 80% of commercial mortgages held by all banks. Regulators and analysts are growing increasingly concerned about commercial real estate debt, particularly loans backed by office buildings. As more and more companies have shifted to work from home and as the higher interest rates has wiped out a lot of small businesses, the amount of office space that is now vacant is at all-time highs. As a result, the value of those office facilities has gone down significantly and a lot of people are now underwater, meaning they owe more on the mortgage than the office building is actually worth. And this has caused a lot of fears that commercial property developers and owners of these office buildings might just let them default, which would be really bad news for the banks. About $270 billion in commercial mortgages held by banks are set to expire this year. If those loans pay off, it would reassure markets. But a large number of defaults could force banks to mark down the value of these, as well as other loans, reinforcing fears over the financial health of the U.S. banking system. And that is probably the largest threat to the banking system right now, but it won't really rear its ugly head for at least another two more months. So at least for now, the bank fears should start to go away, even though they could come back later in the year. Now, hindsight is always 2020, but in retrospect, Berkshire Hathaway cut its position in banks at the perfect time. One of Berkshire Hathaway's most notable moves in the fourth quarter was cutting its exposure to banks. Warren Buffett's company cut its stake in BNY Mellon, which it first disclosed investing in back in 2010, by roughly 60% in the final quarter of 2022. Berkshire also slashed its stake in U.S. Bank Corp by roughly 91% in the same quarter. It should be noted, though, that Berkshire's investment portfolio still has significant exposure to financial stocks. Bank of America and American Express ranked as two of its five biggest stock investments at the end of 2022. And you may remember from yesterday's video how Bank of America and American Express were two of the best bank stocks to buy right now out of the 15 stocks that I listed yesterday. And it's important to remember that as the banking system royals, other parts of the economy are starting to suffer as well. While home sales did spike 14.5% in February, the price dropped for the first time in 11 years. And you might recall how it was a decline in home prices that ultimately led to the 2008 financial collapse. Which all brings us to the Fed's decision on Wednesday. And this time around, the Federal Reserve is kind of flying in the dark. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve has one of the most difficult decisions to make in 15 years. 
And what they decide will determine where the market goes for the next two months. I'm not just talking about the 25 basis point rate hike or possibly a Fed pause. I'm talking about the SEP or Summary of Economic Projections because this is going to tell us not only when the Fed expects to pause, but more importantly, it's going to tell us whether or not the Fed expects to start cutting rates before the end of the year. And we were pretty sure what the Fed was going to do going up to about two weeks ago. But now with the bank starting to collapse, the SEP will be more important than ever. When the Federal Reserve's rate setting committee gathers for its two day meetings, it's usually pretty clear ahead of time what it's going to do. But the meeting that will conclude Wednesday is not like that. Worries about the banking system have upended the central bank's plans, and heading into the meeting on Tuesday, policymakers themselves might not have known what they would decide. Even economists are divided, with some saying the Fed will pause its interest rate increases, while others reckoning it will raise its target range on overnight rates by a quarter of a percentage point. Part of the Fed's difficulty is that while the case for raising rates has been clear, inflation is still too high and the job market is strong, the problems with the banking system are hard to quantify. Now, the Fed is likely to raise rates by a quarter point, but it also must reassure that it can contain a banking crisis. Right now, CME futures put the chances of a 25 basis point rate hike at 86%, while the odds of the Fed pausing are only 14%. But if the Fed does that, at least according to CNBC's Fed survey, the Fed may be about to make a big mistake on rates. Almost three quarters of respondents, that is 72%, expect the Fed to hike by a quarter of a percentage point or 25 basis points, but only 52% think the Fed should hike rates. With the central bank now facing the risk of financial contagion and concerns about the potential for a regional banking crisis, many on Wall Street think it would be better for the Fed to hold some dry powder in reserve. Any move by the Fed to back away from the inflation fight is not good for the long term. The bond market is now pricing in the possibility of a rate cut starting in June, but the CNBC Fed survey pegs the start of a recession in September. The big problem for the Federal Reserve right now is that if they pause, they will save the banks, cause the stock market to rally, and possibly hold off on all of the fear and contagion that has brought down the financial sector. The problem with pausing, though, is that it will cause inflation to start rising once again, which means we end up with a harder recession down the line. On the other hand, if the Fed raises rates on Wednesday, that will help starve off inflation, which is good in the long term, but it could cause the banking crisis to get worse in the short term. Unfortunately, no matter what the Federal Reserve does, they're going to be screwed. But luckily, unlike in 2008, the Fed has tools to fight the bank issues that are distinct from rate hikes, meaning the Federal Reserve could raise rates in order to fight inflation, while at the same time using its other tools to help shore up the banking system. So the Fed at least does have the possibility of both getting inflation down while also making the financial sector strong, but balancing these two and pulling it off just right to avoid a hard recession is going to be very difficult. Regardless, as the Fed weighs whether a pause is warranted, the Fed survey finds that whatever the FOMC does this week, the central bank is nearing the end of its interest rate hiking cycle. On Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, we will get the decision on how much the Fed is going to raise interest rates by, and we can expect the market to immediately rally or sell off, depending upon what the Federal Reserve decides for their interest rate hike. But then immediately, the market is going to shift its attention to the SEP, or Summary of Economic Projections, and they're going to start digging through that and trying to find out how much the Fed plans to have interest rates at a high level for and how long they expect 
expect to have interest rates at a high level before they start to cut. And then ultimately, the market is going to trade based upon the summary of economic projections for the next 30 minutes. Then at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time, Jerome Powell is going to give his press conference as well as answer a lot of questions. And this is where all of the uncertainty and all the unknowns are finally going to be answered. And we're actually going to get it some answers on what the Federal Reserve is actually going to do in the future. Once we get all that information on Wednesday, the market's going to think overnight, try to process everything. Then on Thursday, the market will start to trade in whatever direction it decides. And that will pretty much set up what the market does for the next two months until the next FOMC meeting. Now, let's talk about some individual stocks that you might want to consider buying because it does look like the market is about to go on a rally and this might be helped out by the Federal Reserve on Wednesday. Tesla surged on strong sales in China. The surge comes after the China Merchants Bank International released car insurance registration data. The data shows 106 1,915 new Tesla vehicles registered in China between January 1st to March 19th. Not even a full quarter, but it's already tracking ahead of the last quarter. And the last quarter was already a record quarter for Tesla in China with 122,038 cars delivered. So it looks like Tesla is about to have another record quarter for car deliveries. As a result, the stock was up almost 8% on Tuesday. And a Morgan Stanley analyst thinks Microsoft poses the biggest potential threat to Apple's App Store. Microsoft could launch a new App Store for games as early as next year if regulators approve the company's $75 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard. As a result, they could take as much as 1% of Apple's total revenue away. This is bullish for Microsoft. And Adobe launched Firefly Generative AI, which lets users type to edit images. The stock market loves all things AI, and Adobe stock was up over 3% on the day. And GameStop went on an absolute rally. It looks like the mother of all short squeezes might finally be here as GameStop stock soared after the retailer posted its first quarterly profit in over two years. AMC also followed closely behind, rising after hours as well. And as the market rallied, I made over $11,000 on Tuesday. If you're interested in possibly making $11,000 profit in a single day in your portfolio also, then schedule a call with my onboarding specialist to get all of the information on the program at weprofitdayandnight.com. That's weprofitdayandnight.com. If you got a lot out of this video, then be a good friend and share this video with your friends and family so that they will know what's going on in the markets as well. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, click the bell icon and click all so that you can get notified about my next video. And if you missed yesterday's video where I gave you another update on the markets and everything that's going to move the markets this week, make sure you watch the last video that I uploaded here.